Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q, and in this video I'm going to look at the Tier 4 Tech Tree American Multi-Role Fighter, the Republic P-43 Lancer. Hello there, and here on the tarmac outside my hangar we have the P-43 Lancer, an aircraft delivered in 1940 to the United States Air Corps and immediately relegated to training purposes as it was considered obsolete even as it was delivered. However, it did see action in Claire Chenault's Flying Tigers Group in China, or more formally the American Volunteer Group, where I think it's fair to say it was regarded indifferently. It had high altitude performance and reasonable speed, however several drawbacks that made it vulnerable to the Japanese opposition. In the game, it's regarded as a fairly low altitude, fairly fast multi-role fighter, hence the presence of these bombs. So what we're going to do now is take a look at the numbers. If you don't want to look at the spreadsheet, then uh, use a link below the video to navigate to another part of it. Here we have the spreadsheet showing all of the tier four uh, multi-role fighters in World of Warplanes. There are eight of them. And if you don't know how this spreadsheet works, use the link below in the description to find an instructional video that will show you how this all works. So let's talk about the gun armament and we can see immediately the rating is nine, which is third best in class. However, the cumulative DPS is only 176, which isn't actually the best in class. That belongs to the I-16 late modification here. And as far as weaponry is concerned, it's really outgunned by the Hurricane Mark I also the lag 3 series 4 which is a premium aircraft and a rather good one at that what have we actually got well we've got uh, four 50 cal machine guns or they're they're called 12.7 millimeters within the game um they're separated into two groups synchronized through the propeller has a slightly lower dps of 42 each and on the wing a slightly higher dps of 46 each both of them fire at a rate, a rate of 700 rounds uh, per minute and there is supposedly a difference in range. Now, I find this harder to believe, but that's how the game lists it. 1,640 for the synchronized weapons and 1,803 feet for the uh, wing-mounted weapons. This armament, I would say from experience, is okay, but it's not devastating. Certainly, it doesn't feel anywhere near as good as the Hurricanes .303 Browning machine guns, but the drawback with those is that you have to be pretty close in order to uh, do significant damage to your opponent. You can see the range there, it's only 1,444 feet. So let's have a look at the accuracy of the guns. The auto aim angle is four, uh, pretty much standard for machine guns, as indeed is the rather horrible 0.8 dispersion angle, which immediately tells you you're going to probably want to try and improve the accuracy of these guns. Of course, that's the way that the bullets spread out from the uh, muzzle of the gun. Uh, so 0 0.8 is quite wide, and um, i sometimes find uh, machine guns with 0 0.6 in this game. Um, good long overheat of 20 seconds that you would expect for machine guns, and you don't have any problems with the shell velocities. These are the same guns, so the shell velocities for the two groups are the same, and therefore if a bank, an aircraft is banking away from you and you're shooting at it, you, all your shells will arrive at the same time, and you won't miss with one of the groups. So, moving on to ordnance. Again, third best in class on a rating. What we have is a pair of bombs, £250. And I would recommend you probably get a demolition expert on your pilots because in a tier five game, and you'll more often be fighting in tier five games with this aircraft than you won't. Um, these bombs may struggle even to take out single gun emplacements, but that's what I tend to do with them. I tend to take out a couple of gun emplacements and there's a pretty short reload time of 60, which makes it workable. Uh, the I-629 is a fairly slow aircraft, but carries a lot more ordnance. Um, and therefore, in terms of pure ground attacking capability, is better. However, its low altitude performance and its uh, fairly indifferent weaponry uh, drawbacks there. There's also the Lag Series 3 4, which has reasonably good rockets. Again, I use, tend to employ them in much the same way. Again, with Demolition Expert taking out gun emplacements, two uh, um, per sector that I visit, um, but the reload time is a bit longer. And then we have uh, other competitors. The, the Hurricane has a pair of 250 pound bombs, uh, so it can perform much the same role. So you're beginning to get the feel that uh, uh, most of these uh, aircraft, certainly if I were flying them, I would be attempting to take out gun emplacements with the ordnance. A little bit tricky with the Buffalo, pretty weak bombs. So decent performance, but not stellar. On Survivability, uh, it's second best in class. 220 hit points. Um, the AR-197 is quite a robust aircraft and has 240. But the point is, 
when I build this aircraft, I build it for speed and I try and get away and I try not to get shot. Um, your alternative is a tank build, but I think that just simply means that you'll take longer to be shot down, but you will be shot down. Damage resistance, healthy 45, but watch this fire resistance. This is really unusual for American aircraft. Um, only 30, and that more or less forces you to take um, countermeasures against uh, the possibility of fire. We'll talk more about that, show you how I've set the aircraft up. The plus point, airspeed. It's the fastest multi-roll, and you can see that there's green across the board here, and a good dive speed of 435. Now, unfortunately, the altitude performance is not great, but this does mean that you can do something um, like the P-40. You can dive on opponents, hit them with the reasonable guns, and then boost away before they've had time, uh, one hopes, to turn around and shoot at you. If not, then you can use a horizontal boom zoom attack approach, come in very fast, spatter your uh, enemy with uh, gunfire and if it's something that you know can outturn you and let's face it most things can then you will just zoom away and either come back later when they've lost interest or just go and find different targets and talking of maneuverability we can see that it's 59 and if you scan your eyes across here the maneuverability is the worst in class and it's certainly nowhere near the fighters let alone the rest of the multi-role fighters so take my advice don't try and get in turn fights with this unless you're fighting a heavy or a bomber or a ground attacker. Um, everything else, you want to come in at speed, hit hard, and if you don't destroy it, run away. Altitude performance. Well, technically it's actually the best of the multi-rolls, but this is still pretty low. Um, you're going to find fighters above you. Um, it's nowhere near like the reality of the aircraft. In fact, one was uh, used to photograph um, the top of Everest, if I remember correctly, or certainly take photographs of Everest. Its altitude performance was so good. Not in this game. Um, whilst it's better than these multi-rolls, as I say, it's not particularly interesting. <laughs> Lastly, power-to-weight ratio is quite interesting. Now, there are other things affecting drag, other, uh, sorry, affecting acceleration other than power. And that is drag, for instance. But do pay attention to these. These are figures that aren't particularly stellar. And what this means is that although maybe you can get the aircraft fast, you need to think carefully about slowing it down because you're not going to accelerate very quickly. Uh, not like a Buffalo, not like the I-16 late modification or the I-16-29, although these aircraft are slower than you. So just bear that in mind. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this. Um, but there's a warning sign there, and that means that uh, I think twice about slowing down uh, behind, for instance, a ground attacker that has his engine shot out, unless I was very clear about the minimap um, being um, clear of uh, enemy threats. Go and have a look at uh, the worst in class figures. As we can see, that gunnery, despite being third best in class in theory, you can see some red here where it's uh, second and third worst in class as well. So it is average. Um, Similarly with the ordnance, it's in it's pretty average. Survivability, again, fairly average. It's better than the some of the other multi rolls, but these figures are all compressed. Therefore, it's not particularly um, fantastic. No red for the SB because it is simply best in class. Um, Maneuverability, worst in class, and the power to weight ratio. You can actually see this is coming out as third worst in class. So that's going to Another warning that you need to be careful about slowing this aircraft down. Look at that minimap. Make sure that there are no other threats that can get on your tail because it, you might not be able to get away with them on them if you have to accelerate. Okay, so what do I think uh, we should do with this aircraft? Well, I think these figures suggest very strongly that you want a speed build. Um, you need to avoid dogfighting. You need to try and support your brand attackers you need to avoid fur balls where you will inevitably be addressed by several aircraft unless you can see a very clear in route and exit route and you need to use those bombs in order to help flip sectors right so let's go and see how i've set this aircraft up Here we are on the tarmac outside my hangar with the P-43 again. My instance of this aircraft is specialised, which means I have all of the equipment and consumable slots available. When you first get this aircraft, I'm afraid you're going to be significantly hampered. Of three equipment slots, two are locked. One on the airframe, one on the outboard weapon. And of the consumables, there are four slots, but two of them again are locked. One on the engine and again on the outboard weapon. Given there are more specialised aircraft in the game than not, that's going to make your life difficult in this aircraft as you grind it. 
So I've swapped position so we can see the left-hand side of the screen better. In a moment or two, you'll see why. Um, let's pop this aircraft back into uh, specialist configuration and let's see how we've actually set it up. Now in the forthcoming battle, this is actually the way that I set the aircraft up. Lightweight wing frame and strength and hard points. Probably neither of these are the items I would choose these days. However, they're not wrong choices. Let's deal with the cockpit slot first. I don't think there's any argument that the gun sight is the one to go for here. And most importantly, I've picked off um, the two bottom characteristics. Accuracy when firing at moving targets, which should widen the dispersion angle. Um, which means that you can be off target by just a little bit more and you'll still hit your target. The other one there is accuracy of forward firing armament um, and that will close up the dispersion angle, the way the bullets spread out as they leave the muzzle of the gun uh, and thus improve the accuracy as well. Uh, other bonus characteristics there. Chance of inflicting critical damage, chance of causing a flyer, flyer more critical damage and the pilot's resistance to injuries which is actually probably the one I would pick off we are to reassemble this equipment now. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to waste the resources. Next we have a lightweight wing frame. This is not a wrong choice and in the next section you'll see some numbers which may actually help you decide whether you think you'd like to choose this piece of equipment in, uh, rather than another piece. However, I would probably go for a polished skin here. Let's just see what we've done with the lightweight wing frame for the moment. So we've picked off uh, wings resistance to critical damage. Probably wouldn't use that bonus characteristic. Um, if I'm going for an agility build, and bear in mind you'll never get this up to fighter levels of agility, you'll only become competitive with other multi-rolls. Um, roll maneuverability there, twice, and I think there's a yaw maneuverability, there it is, the fifth characteristic. I'd probably pick those off if I was going to mount a lightweight wing frame and go to the trouble of uh, picking off specific characteristics. If we went for a polished skin, which is what I would probably do these days for rather than a reinforced skin, I don't really like a tank build on this aircraft, See if we've got one available. And we've got an ultimate polish skin here. We've also got an experimental one here, but we'll go with this one. What would we get? Well, obviously we get um, extra speed and more acceleration while diving. Altitude performance is fairly poor in this, so I'm not sure about the diving figure. Um, however, you may like that, if you, particularly if you like to be dive bombing. Which you can just about do in this if you really try hard. Um, as for bonus characteristics, um, I've gone for your maneuverability and maneuverability in turns, although this was probably configured for another aircraft, and then 1% cruise speed. Um, if you're going to go for a speed build, I'd probably pick off um, the bottom characteristic there, the maximum speed with boost activated, then the cruise speed, and then possibly even one of the acceleration um, bonuses there, rather than the two maneuverability bonuses. But you have the option for a little bit more maneuverability if you want to. And then we come to ultimate strength and hard points. Again, a good choice. Um, the reload speed on the bombs is already quick, 60 seconds, and this reduces it even more. You'll see how in the next section. But it also reduces the overall speed of the aircraft, which tends to mitigate uh, what you're doing if you're going for a polished skin. Um, if you are going to go for the ultimate strength and hard points, then probably you'd want to pick off the 1% cruise speed, possibly the 1% uh, maximum speed with boost activated, uh, and then, uh, and although I haven't got it here, I think you would want to pick off the bomb, the plus 10% bomb reload speed, and I can't think why I haven't got that characteristic selected on this. I uh, clearly haven't uh, decided to use the materials to do that. However, <clears throat> there is an argument, not for a rocket site, because there are no rockets on this aircraft, so we can dismiss that, but for using a bomb site. Now, at first blush, this may seem a bit odd. You're flying at low level. You're pretty close to your targets when you drop the bombs. Why do you need extra accuracy? It's because of the bonus characteristics. And just get them up. The first characteristic there is plus 3% damage inflicted by bombs, which when combined with the consumable I'm going to talk about in the slot below, uh, actually can make these bombs much, much more, much more powerful. Um, now, there is a penalty there is a slight increase on the reload speed, but I'll leave it to you to judge whether you think that slight increase is worth living with. Um, and nowadays, at least for the next few battles, I think I would probably pick off the equipment that you can now see here. Gun sight, polished skin, and a bomb sight. I'm just going to reset everything before I spend six tokens. When it comes to consumables, Survivability figure, I've already mentioned that the resistance of fire is a very unusually low figure of 30 for an American aircraft. And I think that means you have to do one of at least two things. 
Yeah, you either have to mount a fire extinguisher, or you have to come to your pilot skills and use, I would say, waste at least one, if not two, skill points on either of fire resistance um, or firefighter, or indeed you would pick off both of those. And if you really are paranoid about the effect of fire, you may want to do the fire extinguisher and those two skills. Um, if you put on the two skills, then you may have the option for putting on a first aid dressing package. I actually don't think that's as useful um, in this aircraft as it is in some others. You're not chasing GAAs with powerful rear gunners that often. Therefore, I prefer to put on the fire extinguisher and also not use the, the um, and not use the skill points. If you have at least one second's worth of boost available, engine cooling will give you ten seconds on top. And currently, the way this aircraft is configured, I've got ten seconds of boost. If I have all my boost available, that will give me twenty seconds. Well, if you're trying to flee from an aircraft, having twenty seconds of boost is clearly better than ten. Always my first choice. If you're really keen to crank up the speed, you probably can pick you could pick off the improved mixture control to give yourself an extra five percent um thrust two percent speed um or if you're paranoid about having your engine knocked out you can put on the engine restart but i think the engine cooling is by far and away the, my favorite my preferred choice when it comes to um ammunition i always put on universal ammunition i'm not going to discuss gold if you're willing to spend gold then you'll know all about the effects of gold ammunition Here's the um, improved fragmentation. Again, a standard consumable. There are gold versions available, but this increases the damage output of your bombs. Uh, and in com combination with the bomb site, this can be quite a strong feature. Okay, so that's equipment and consumables. Let's discuss pilot skills. Let's just tidy the screen up a little so we can see pilot skills better. And what you do with pilot skills is going to depend on whether your aircraft is stock and whether or not you've been able to mount equipment. Now, if it's stock or you haven't mounted equipment, I think the first skill to go for is the two-pointer Engine Guru 1. If you are able to get um, equipment onto the aircraft quickly, for instance, you use tokens to specialise it, not something I would po probably do, but you might, then I think there's a strong argument for putting on Aerodynamics Expert um, on first. Uh, but you must have that lightweight wing frame or that polished skin, otherwise this has a no value. Either way, these are the two skills I would prioritise. With the build that I've currently got, the lightweight wing frame being in place, I've gone for aerobatics expert second. Um, however, now that I'm thinking about configuring this aircraft for speed, um, if that was the way that I'd gone originally, I think I probably would have picked off cruise flight first. Again, in either case, as soon as I had a third skill point, I would have taken off either of these two skills, whichever I'd picked, and put it on Engine Guru 2. And after that, I'd probably repeat the process, pick off one of these two skills, um, but then work towards uh, my way all the way up to Marksman 2. Now, the truth of the matter is, this is a Tier 4 aircraft. You're probably not going to spend the time getting a really highly skilled pilot on it. 10 skills would be a lot. 14 would be almost unimaginable. So I think the thing to do now is go and have a look at the effects of the various builds, or at least three sample builds, uh, to help you decide what equipment, um, consumables and skills that you might pick. And what we have in front of us now is a spreadsheet showing the base characteristics of the P43, that's in columns C and D, and then three example builds, columns E and F, I and J, M and N, and I hope that the numbers that you see may help you decide what combination of equipment, consumables and pilot skills you want. Now, bear in mind, the figures that I have here, you may not obtain because you may not have the equipment at the same level. You may have calibrated it less or more than I, I, I have. You may have picked off different bonus characteristics and so on and so on. The first one we're going to look at is the build in ENF, and I've called this the speed reload build. Now it has a gun sight. Um, therefore, we've got some improvement on the auto aim angle. That's a little bit wider than it was before, and that means that you can be off target by a little bit more and still hit your target. That's a 5% increase. We've also managed to narrow the dispersion angle. That's the cone in which your bullets spread out as they leave the muzzle of the gun by 17%, bringing it down from 0.8 originally to 0.664. That's quite useful. We even managed to get a small improvement on the overheat time of one second or thereabouts, 5%. And this is common to all three of these builds here, so we won't be discussing this again. 
Ordnance. The big improvement here is minus 14% uh, reload speed, 51.6 seconds as opposed to 60. So this is a considerable increase. We've also improved by use of the improved fragmentation consumable, the uh, damage output of the bombs by 10%. So bringing them up to 4840, 4400 originally. Now the use of the um, strengthened hard points has an adverse effect on speed. It's masked in the case of the cruise speed by the use of the polished skin. So we've still got a 6.7% increase there to 228 miles an hour or thereabouts. However, you can see that the maximum speed under boost, we've actually lost 4.8% of our speed. And we're down to 331.3. Now we've got some small effects on maneuverability. These are not going to significantly change the performance of your aircraft. Um, but you've got a 2% improvement in the turn time and a 2% improvement in the roll rate. The next build is in INJ, and this is what I might call the agility and bombsite build. So we have a lightweight wing frame and a bombsite instead of a polished skin and a um, strengthened hard points. We'll skip over the guns because they're the same as previously. What's happened here? Well, because of the bombsite's bonus characteristic, Combined with the improved fragmentation, we've actually got the bombs up to 4,985 damage, which is a 13.3% increase. The original reload speed of 60 has now gone up to 64.2, but it's a quite a quick reload speed in the first place. You may be willing to take this 7% uh, um, worsening in performance in order to get that extra damage. Um, Bear in mind that it's nowhere near the 51.6 seconds of the previous build, of course, but I still think this is a pretty good figure and it's worth considering. Now, there is a hit on the maneuverability by using the lightweight wing frame. We've actually lost a rating point. We've lost some hit points. It's down to 210. That's a 4.6% um, decrease. We've also uh, managed to lose one point of damage resistance. Probably not going to have a tremendous effect, but just bear in mind that by using the lightweight wing frame, you, you are getting that uh, decrease in uh, survivability. No effects on airspeed in this case because we haven't mounted equipment that affects it. We have got an increase in agility from 59 up to 65. This is now fairly competitive with certainly stock multi-rolls at tier 4, but clearly it's nowhere near fighter level. But nevertheless, you may like the extra time you can spend on target banking with it before you have to break off and fly away. And we've got a 10.2% increase on the rating, 6 points. Uh, a very nearly 6% increase on the um, turn speed, which is down to 10.44. The most significant improvement is the roll rate, um, which is 160 or 161 probably, a 23.4% increase. However, I don't think this is going to significantly improve this aircraft's um, ability to dogfight, and therefore this is probably not a build I would go for, but if you like your agility, this may be something worth considering. There's also a slightly mysterious increase um, in theory on the climb rate, which is useful. I speculated that this was coming from the 3% um, increase on boost skills um, from Engine Guru 1. But then that would ask, prompt the question of why it doesn't appear here. Is that something to do with strength and hard points? And it's also not exactly 3%. Um, it is actually listed in the game as 298. So I'm going to have to try and investigate exactly how that's being calculated a little bit more. The last build, what I would call a speed and bombsite build. So this is combining the polished skin with the bombsite. Um, we've already talked about the guns, not going to talk about this again. There's no change there from the original build because we're still using the same gun sight. The bombs, we've managed to get that big increase on the output, damage output again to 4,985. This is through the combination of the bombsite, the bonus characteristic, the improved fragmentation. Again, the reload speed is uh, a 7% loss compared to base, 60 seconds up to 64.2 seconds. You can probably live with this. Survivability, again, we've got a dim, um, slight worsening um, of the uh, damage resistance. I'm not actually quite sure where that's coming from. Uh, not unusual. It's a little bit mysterious sometimes exactly how uh, the World of Warplanes team, teams calculate uh, the effects of uh, pilot skills, consumables and equipment. What we do have is a significant increase in airspeed. This time we're up to a rating of 38 
and we've managed to uh, avoid the effect of the strengthened hard points and that produces a cruise speed of 300, 236, very nearly 236.5 miles an hour, 10.5% increase and no adverse effect on the cruise speed which remains at the base of 348. Uh, the maneuverability build, that's the wrong figure there. I think it's actually 60. I'm going to put that in now. Um, we have those very similar effects to the first build that I talked about. Just a slight improvement on turn speed and a slight improvement on roll rate. Neither of these are going to make your day in terms of uh, dogfighting. And again, we have that slightly mysterious increase on the um, climb rate. Now, for what it's worth, the build that I would probably go for myself is Gunsight. Polish skin and uh, bombsite, which is this build here. However, now you've got the figures in front of you, you can have a good look at them, decide um, which set of equipment, which set of skills, which set of tumbles might uh, best suit you. And with that, I think it's time to go and see how this aircraft performs in battle. The map for the forthcoming battle is Arctic region, a dark map. It's the Winter War variant with four sectors and they're laid out at least from this perspective in the shape of a Y. At the points of the Y we have three garrisons conveying the standard resources every five seconds. As you might expect, the central sector is tactically important because it allows easy access to the other sectors. In this case it's also strategically important, at least the most strategically important sector on the map because you can spawn here which means you can get to any of those garrisons even more quickly and the normal way to win this battle would be to try and hold this forward airstrip for the entirety of the game and certainly at any rate longer than the enemy in order to use it as a springboard for attacks on the far-flung garrisons you also would need to lock down your local garrison now because of the order of battle which we'll look at in a moment there's an alternative tactic it's a more difficult one to employ but you can try and hold all of the garrisons whilst ignoring the airstrip this is less common but as we'll see it's the option i took in this battle here's why looking at the order of battle we can see i'm top tier in my p43 we have a top tier blenheim f which is reasonably fast compared to the rest of these aircraft and has a good bomb load therefore is a very versatile plane and at tier four um, we have a grand attacking bisha which is very slow bisha one i should say and we also have one of the new skewer mark ones which is a <clears throat> Reasonable guns, decent bomb, um, but flies a bit like a brick. The enemy have an HE-112, and before I talk about their ground attacker, they also have two other fighters, a Type 224, a relatively rare British premium, pretty manoeuvrable if not that fast, and also the Ki-27, the Japanese premium aircraft. They have three fighters. This means they are, are, in theory, ideally suited to take and defend this forward airstrip. And hence, that's why I have titled, entitled this video, Do the Unexpected, because I'm not going to go and contest the forward airstrip a great deal during this battle. In addition, they've also got a very versatile Fokker Wolf 189C, which is specialised. If I come across that, I want to handle it with care, but I will also want to remove it from the game as often as possible. Let's go and see how this battle panned out. As we go into battle, my consideration was that the airfield was not for me with three enemy fighters, human players, likely to shoot me down because of my lack of maneuverability. I also calculated that my bots would be able to, that was close, uh, calculated that my bots would be able to take my local garrison, so I decided to head for the second nearest garrison. And my plan here was to take out two gun emplacements and shoot down what I could in order to try and secure this sector. Now, had I got the bomb site mounted, with the extra damage bonus characteristic and of course the improved fragmentation consumable it's conceivable i might have been able to take out the warehouse complexes at this sector I have to experiment with that it's perhaps something that you should bear in mind nevertheless here's the first gun emplacement under my bomb site drop the bomb and these are good bombs so it's almost a guaranteed destruct destruction of the target now we're on the second one i'm being left alone by the bots take out that target and conveniently for me there's a ground attacker in the sector which I can shoot down. Having done that, ahead of me are two air defence fighters. One of them comes in front of me and I destroy that to secure the sector. The enemy has the air base, as you can see up at the top there, and now they've only just got their um, local garrison. That suggests they haven't got a huge presence there. That would be good for me because that's where I'm going next. I'll avoid the radio mast that's coming up shortly. 
I will have my bombs by the time that base is unlocked and I arrive there. Now, if we can get these three sectors, that will more or less force the enemy to disperse from the airfield, if that's where they're concentrated, which is what I think they probably are doing. And once they disperse from there, we've got a better chance of taking that airfield. So in order to make sure that my bombs are unlocked and the sector is unlocked, uh, bombs are reloaded and the sector is unlocked, I haven't sprinted here using my boost. It's a good idea to have picked up my boost anyway. Back up to the full 10 seconds. My team have actually nearly taken half that um, base you can see up, up at the top there. So they're doing a, a good job of keeping the enemy busy whilst I come in here and hopefully take this sector away from um, them. First gun emplacement comes into view, drop the bomb. Swing to a second one, waiting for this circle to turn gold. There we go. And now I'm looking for aircraft to shoot down. And here's where the lightweight wing frame perhaps is useful. I'm able to turn a little bit more quickly to get onto the air defence aircraft. First one goes down. Look for another. I'm looking for the big red arrows around the um, central HUD tells me what are the nearest targets, in case you're wondering. The next air defence aircraft goes down. Now we lost something here, but we gained the airfield, so we're in a good position at the moment, especially if I manage to knock down another aircraft here. However, none of them are near at the moment. Think about chasing whatever that was off in the distance, and I think decide that I'll try and take out this partially destroyed target. That's my fifth target. Work over the tents on another target, and if I can come back and finish that off, that will be uh, this sector captured. As it turns out, I've got my bombs. So to make sure of it, I dropped two on this warehouse, com warehouse complex, and now we've got superiority. It won't last long. You can see that two sectors are under uh, threat. It will help us establish a lead, and now the enemy's under pressure. So we lose both of the sectors almost at the same time. However, that helps me to decide where I'm going. We've lost our local garrison. I'm going to recoup boost, let the bombs reload, and basically repeat and rinse the exercise that I've done on the other two garrisons. So as expected, with three fighters in, on their team, I was pretty sure that the enemy would be able to a take the airfield and having lost it they took it back fairly swiftly. Got my bombs, however there are threats approaching me in terms of aircraft, I need to check those out. They're not coming directly at me, so here we go on a gun emplacement. Didn't quite get that perfectly aimed. Then I decide to drop the second one on the already damaged warehouse complex. And as it turns out, I didn't destroy uh, that target. However, I've shot down an aircraft. I look to see what's left. One of the fighters has made it into this sector, and as I shoot him down, we flip that sector and we're now 3 1 up. Side that the, air def the uh, enemy heavy, which is in the sector uh, trying to shoot down our ground attacker, needs to be removed. And that saves the ground attacker and gives me an extra kill. Now at this stage we do have all three garrisons. My plan has worked to perfection. The enemy is under intense pressure, but it means the only uh, area that I can attack is the airfield. Now with a bit of luck, the enemy will have dispersed because they realise they need to take other sectors. So for instance, you can see off to the right, they're attacking their local garrison. They're also making inroads on their garrison off to the left, although something is clearly defending that because they've gone backwards there. Got my bombs back. Here we go on a simple target. Even though it's partially destroyed by the time I get there, I decide to finish it off. And similarly with this one. And now the airfield is very nearly captured. I'm lucky I'll be able to shoot down some simple targets have this. There's one, and that captures the airfield. And the enemy has managed to secure their local garrison, 
put their 3-1 down and I've just removed their HE-112 from the centre. I need to be a little bit careful about that ground attacker. It's not just a question of flying at it, it's A got pretty good guns and secondly it is decently manoeuvrable so I need to pay attention to what's going on. As it happens he, turn, he decides to fly straight past me. That means I'm able to get on his tail and I'm able to finish him off. And that's my tenth kill. And I've already got eight grand, grand targets. Those of you who are experienced in the game will know what that means provided we win the battle. We look like we're in a good position to do that. Finish off another aircraft, the I-16 late modification I think that was, or early modification in fact. I have my bombs, so we have two sectors each but we're well ahead, however the right thing to do is go and make an attack on this sector. Finish off another uh, target, an uh, air defence fighter. Size up another one. I've got my eye on the ground attack just behind. I decide to leave him alone, see if I can get more work done on ground targets. And that was probably the wrong decision. I should have taken him out and then got the ground targets, since he actually hunted me. But it was all too late, and there we have a victory. And those of you who have anticipated it, well done. That's a Gabreski medal. So, let's have a look at the outcome of this battle. And as we can see from the centre, it's a 4 chevron battle or a Grade 2 multi-role fighter. That grows 77,491 credits or silver if you prefer. Now nearly 26,000 of that came from the premium account bonus. If we look at expenses, we can see there are none. The aircraft wasn't shot down, so no repair costs, and I was, as usual, using prepaid consumables. This was the first win of the day, so the experience is 1,638 base, with the premium account bonus, as you can see there, of just over 800. Other bonuses coming to at just over 1,700 there. On the free experience, we've got 167 base and 40 um, coming from the premium account bonus. A couple of tokens, both for first medals of the day. One of them's for the Lambert, and then one's for the rather rare Gabreski medal, as you can see here. On the personal score tab, we can see that uh, one of the um, class-specific missions was complete. That's for capture points. Four-fifths complete for the sectors captured. Um, not a great deal of defending done here. It's not the way I tend to play this aircraft anyway, so this, this one is often left incomplete, hence only the four chevrons. That garnered 13,395 personal points, four sectors captured, I was busy, 13 aerial targets destroyed, damage to those targets were 1,453, didn't lose the aircraft, capture points rather handsome 655, only 80 of those were for defending, hence only two destroyed when defending, and um, 575 coming from attacking sectors. On the team score tab, we can see that that was enough for first place, both by chevrons and personal points, this would have been for both teams. Nice contribution from the Blen in there. And on the enemy side, although it didn't earn him many chevrons, uh, the uh, FW-189C, who tried to shoot me down a couple of times, was also pretty active. That brings me to the end of this look at the P-43 Lancer, and I think this video illustrates two very important general points. The first is, consider your mix of equipment, consumables and pilot skills very carefully. For instance, with this plane I've shown at least three, there are probably more, builds that could be employed successfully. One of them you are likely to favour over the others. The second general point is, look at the order of battle, look at the map, assess your uh, plane's strengths and the enemy's likely strengths and formulate a battle plan before you even start flying towards your first sector. Well, I hope you found that helpful and that if you did, you'll come and see my future content. If you're not already a subscriber to this channel, please consider doing so now. I'd appreciate the support. Until the next time, this is the Noble Q, signing out.